in the mirror of his word, reflections that I see, makes me wonder why he never gave up on me. He loves me as I am, and helps me when I pray, remember he's the potter, I'm the clay. He's still working on me, to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. How loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. Good morning. <laughs> I'm not going to do this. But it's good to be back here this morning. It's good to see people in the seats. It's good to see each other face to face. It's good to hear music being played and sung to our Lord and Savior. It's good to, 
to clap and encourage those who are using their gifts to honor God. It's good to shake your hand this morning. It's good to welcome you here. It's, it's good to know that, that Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am also. So it's good to know that God is here in our midst this morning. And we can worship him. So, <clears throat> get back in there. It's good to be here. God is good. Amen? Amen. Follow along in your bulletins. We're going to go through this week's announcements. And uh, we'll move on with the service. Um, Pastor's verse of encouragement for this morning is found in James 1, verse 21. It says, Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness and humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. James 1, 21. This week at the CFC, please feel free to access the kids' videos that we used a while ago for those uh, uh, whose children still enjoy the Sunday school lessons there. Uh, the email or the website is, is listed and you can access those at any time, except during the service. Do it after the service or before the service. Uh, there's also small and large print daily breads available in the back for pickup. And some of you maybe haven't been inside the building for quite some time, so check your mailboxes. I'm sure there's some mail in your mailboxes, uh, so check that out. There might be some good news in there. Uh, there's some new keys for kids' devotionals that are also available in the back. By the, bullet, or by the mailboxes on the table. So pick one up if you uh, enjoy going through those. Prayer requests and praise items for this week. Continue uh, praying for healing for Austin Dick. He's broken bones in his foot and there's swelling. Um, summer is not a great time to, to have a broken foot, especially as a child. Uh, no time is a good time to have a broken foot, but summer especially. Pray for uh, Willie Entz, he's had uh, knee replacement. Pray for healing for those two. Also pray for Ann Entz, who's scheduled to have a day surgery on Tuesday, uh, July 20th in Winnipeg, and it's heart-related and involves an ablation. So uh, we'll pray for Ann Entz as well, that uh, the Lord will give her uh, comfort and peace as that happens, and pray for the doctors as well. Pray for more rain. Farmers are seeing their crops drying up. And the fire dangers are extremely high. Uh, we almost had a campfire yesterday at our house. We were going to roast some marshmallows, and then I realized, oh, no, there's a fire ban. As a firefighter, I should know that. I almost forgot. It was so easy to just make a fire. but So we didn't. We roasted our marshmallows over the oven. Have you ever done that? Who's ever roasted their marshmallows over an oven element? Some of you should try it. It's really quick and easy. You don't have to make a fire or anything. And you can get more control. They don't burn as easy. And you can get a nice, lightly golden crust on there. It's perfect. Um, there was, I pray for more rain. There is some rain up north. You can see it as you were coming in and felt some raindrops. Pray that the Lord would send rain. At the end of the day, the Lord knows what he's doing. Uh, but we can still send our request to him. Uh, but trusting him that he will take care of us. Pray for our deacon nominees, Corny and Mary Dick, David and Carolina Weave, and Justin and Monica Giesbrecht. Are those three couples here? Maybe I could get them to stand up just so you know who we're talking about. Justin and Monica are back there. There we go. Corny and Mary are over there. Uh, there you go. There they are. So pray for these couples as they contemplate this call and as, and as well for us as a congregation as we get ready to, to have uh, an election that uh, we would seek God's heart and who he has chosen as our next deacon couple. So we want to do the Lord's will in that. Congratulations to Harold and Marla Redekop on the birth of their son, Lawson Jude, born July 3rd. And they are here as well. Congratulations. <laughs> it's amazing what a few months out of church does. The last time we saw them, there was just the two of them. Now there's three of them. Yeah. That's one way of filling up the church. So congratulations. Uh, pray also for the family of John Fair, who passed away in an ATV accident. I don't know if uh, some of you knew him. He was, he was known to a few of us. And 
um, pray for his family as that's a tough, a tough loss to, to lose a father and a husband at such a young age. Uh, and in that regard too, pray for, for safety on our roadways. The weather is nice and, and sometimes our, uh, our feet are a little heavy on the roads and maybe we get a little careless, uh, but uh, pray for safety on roadways with farmers on the road and, and also the heat. The heat can be uh, dangerous as well. So let's, let's continue to, to be cautious with that. On the back of your bulletins, upcoming CFC and community events, uh, Manitoba Passion Play is taking place. I'll let you read that. Uh, Gospel Echoes Thrift Store is looking for some volunteers. Uh, the need right now is for cashiers and cashier helpers. Uh, also some pricers and sorters. Uh, contact Dave Martins uh, if you're interested in helping out in that way. Uh, we've also had some inquiries into baptism. Um, and at this time, we want to extend an open invitation to anyone who has been contemplating this step of obedience to God and we'll be planning a baptism service shortly. Uh, Eden Mental Health Center is also planning a few events for the summer, and uh, the info is there. SBC's annual golf tournament fundraiser, August 3rd, and I'll let you read up on that as well. And I think we should also pray for uh, this next weekend. Uh, there will be, I think, eight families from our church going up to uh, um, Sportsman's Corner in, oh, what's the name again? What's the town? Westburn, Westburn, Manitoba. We're going to doing, be doing church camping next weekend. Uh, so pray for safety there as well as we travel and for a, a good time of fellowship there. On the bottom of the back of the bulletin, it says that we've sent a tentative date for a deacon election for September 20th. So again, pray for that day. Pray for God's leading in your heart as you contemplate who it is that the Lord has chosen for, for our next deacon couple. Is there any other announcements that I've missed? I haven't heard any car horns honking this morning yet, so that's, <laughs> that's good. Uh, before we move on with the service, then, let's, let's pause for a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you again for this day. Lord, we thank you that you are a God that cares about us and that loves us so much that you came and died for us. Lord, we thank you for that price that you paid Lord, may we never take it lightly or forget about it. Lord, we, we don't fully comprehend sometimes the price and what it costs you uh, to save us. Lord, we appreciate it. Lord, may we take that good news and share it with others who are lost, that they too may have that opportunity to come to you and, and to experience your grace and forgiveness and your joy. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity again to meet together in person, Lord, to see each other face to face and to encourage each other and to smile at each other and to build each other up. Lord, may we never take this for granted either. Lord, may we take every opportunity that we have, that you give us, uh, to, to do your will, to honor, to honor you, to uh, build up your kingdom, to build each other up, and Lord, to further your, your work. Lord, we pray this morning for Austin Dick, uh, Lord, for his broken foot and the swelling that he's experiencing, Lord, we pray that you would uh, give him uh, comfort and, Lord, that you would give him quick healing so that he may uh, return to running around and, and enjoying the summer. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would give him patience as well as he waits for that healing and for his parents as well as they uh, help him out. Lord, we also pray for Willie Entz uh, with a knee replacement. Lord, we pray that you would give patience there as well as healing takes place. And Lord, that you would there too give him quick healing so that he would be able to return to functioning uh, normally. Lord, we also pray for Anne Entz, who is scheduled to go in for surgery this week. Uh, Lord, may you give her comfort and peace. And Lord, we also pray that you'd be with the doctors, that you would give them uh, steady hands and uh, calm nerves and, and wisdom to, to do uh, what is needed to, to get, get her fixed up. Lord, we commit that to you and trust that your will will be done. Lord, we also pray for the family of John Fair, for his children and his wife, uh, and the extended family, his co-workers, and all those who knew him. Lord, we pray that, that you would give peace there as well, and uh, Lord, that you would be especially near to, to Lena and, and the kids, uh, that you would... Uh, 
wrap your arms around them and give them comfort as only you know, only you can do. Lord, we pray for uh, our farmers in the area. Uh, Lord, there's so much that we cannot control. We can put the seed in the ground and uh, we can water what we have. But Lord, ultimately it's you that gives the increase. And so Lord, we pray that you would continue to take care of us and continue to take care of our farmers. Um, and Lord, we pray according to your will that you would send rain and, and help things to grow. Uh, Lord, we pray that as we wait for that rain and as things are dry and, and uh, very susceptible to fire all around us and in the forests around us, uh, in the province, Lord, that you would uh, grant safety for those who are uh, fighting these fires and uh, living in those communities who are affected by it, Lord, that you would uh, give give safety there. Lord, we also want to pray for our deacon nominees for Corny and Mary Dick, for David and Carolina Weeb, and Justin and Monica Giesbrecht. Uh, Lord, we know that these are all three men who are leaders in the church in some way, and we just pray that as we get closer to the election date, Lord, that you would speak to us and that you would reveal to us who it is that you have chosen, and Lord, that we would uh, um, elect accordingly. Lord, we uh, also uh, want to thank you for new life, Lord, for uh, the life of uh, Lawson Jude, uh, the son of, of Harold and Marla. Lord, we pray that you would bless them richly as they raise up this child. Lord, may he grow up to, to love you and uh, love his family. And uh, Lord, give Harold and Marla wisdom as they learn how to raise children and be with them and give them joy as they do that. Lord, this morning, uh, we again thank you for always taking care of us, always being there with us and, uh, and guiding us. And Lord, we thank you again for, for those who uh, have faithfully given to you and your work and we pray a blessing on those, and Lord, may you uh, continue to bless the gift that is given here, and also continue to bless the giver. And Lord, we uh, commit this service to you, and uh, pray that you would have your way with us. In Jesus' name we pray.
was sometimes up and sometimes down Coming for to carry me home But still my soul is heavenward bound Coming for to carry me home Swing low, sweet chariot Coming for to carry me home Swing low, sweet chariot Coming for to carry me home Coming for to carry me My Lord offered me a free gift, one that I could never earn. A sparkled a tiny amber, where the fire now burns. He's the author of my pardon, his name I will extol. He's the mighty rock of ages, keeper of my soul. While there's breath in my body, reason. There's no way to repay him, so great a price he paid. My sins were buried with him as we laid him in the grave. How I long to meet my Jesus face to face. How I long to meet my Jesus face to face. For now I stand as a witness of his grace while there's breath in my body reason in my soul while there's life in my spirit the lord will be my goal while i have my feet i will praise my king with all that is within me rise and sing 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 with all
Won't you scroll over heaven with you some glad day when all our troubles and heartaches are vanished away? Then we'll enjoy the beauty where all things are new. I want to scroll over heaven with you. I want to scroll. I was told three, but I think I'm going to do another one. Jesus was his name. Love was his game. Every word he spoke was the truth. When he came to call, they nailed him to the cross. They paid the price for me and for you. Yes, he walked. And the wind it did blow as he walked down the street in single file. And the blood began to pour from the crown of thorns he wore as he walked that impossible mile. Yes, he walked, yes, he walked up the hill to Calvary. God was giving up his only child. And it's there in the book for us to read How he walked that impossible mile Yes, he walked, yes, he walked up the hill to Calvary morning. It's good to be able to go to church and see uh, church family instead of going to superstore to church family. Today I'll be reading in James chapter 4 verse 13 to 15. Come now you who say today or tomorrow we will go to in such a city, such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. Sometimes in our day-to-day -day life, we forget that God actually gave us what we have. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we do thank you for um, the things you've given us and the things you will give us. And Lord, we are also to thank you for the things that you will take from us. Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. And Lord, we do thank you for giving us this building back to us so that we can congregate again. And Lord, we uh, thank you um, for bringing us back together. And we also pray uh, for Pastor Davey, Lord, that uh, you've given him a message for us to hear today. And we just ask that you give us the ears to hear him and give him the, the words to teach to us, and we ask that you bless our day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
how wearing a mask and wearing this ear thing does not work well together. I tried it a couple times and I spent a minute untangling it, so. It is so good to see each and every one of you again. Um, sorry. I see a witchy cornea. I'm a little overwhelmed. Psalm 122, verse 1 says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. An amen to that. So thank you, Menno and family, for leading us in those, or singing those songs for us, since apparently we're not supposed to sing. So, But um, especially that last song that really touched my heart. So it was good. Um, heaven looks so beautiful, and, and it looks even more beautiful as the days go by. Uh, and and I'm, I'm excited to... I'm very excited to go there uh, one sweet day when God calls us home. Thank you, Jake, for that scripture reading. I know it was very fitting. Um, our text today, if you would, if you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 through 22. Um, I've preached before quite a while ago, I think. I don't know, It's with this pandemic, it's kind of, Time has kind of uh, stood still. I, I'm, I don't know so how, how long that was ago. I don't know. But I preached uh, verses 1 through 10. And I always uh, told myself I wanted to preach verses 11 through 22 one day. And so today is that day. Um, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. Uh, before we do that, though, I would, um, I would ask if you're able to stand with me for prayer. God, thank you so much for allowing us to gather here again. Uh, Lord Jesus, that you are with us throughout everything and that you are sovereign. That you send the rain when you see fit. We hear the thunder right now and we are overwhelmed with gratitude that you are God and we are not. Um, that you have a plan and, and you will see it through. Uh, Lord Jesus, throughout the pandemic, throughout the dryness, you have a plan. And if nothing else, Lord Jesus, it's to make us more grateful for what we have. To make us less complacent. Um, to be more reliant on you. And Lord Jesus, it's working. In my heart, at least. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that, that you are having your way with this pandemic, uh, that you are bringing people closer to you, that you are bringing people to you, and that you are using this for your honor and your glory. Uh, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for conquering death and forgiving us for our sin on the cross. Um, Lord, I, I praise you and I worship you for this family that you have given me, this church family. I, I thank you for each one of them, for how special they are to me, to us. And I pray for each one of them as well, Lord Jesus, that you would bless each one and that you would keep each one of them and that, that you would hold them close. That if there's any one of them that is struggling, Lord Jesus, that you would be with them. I, I praise you that you are sovereign, God. I praise you that, that you know all things, that, that we can trust you throughout everything. doesn't matter what comes, we can trust you. And I pray, Lord Jesus, last of all, for rain. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would send the rain, and that you would send it in abundance. But Lord Jesus, we also know that you are sovereign, and that and that you have a plan, and so we trust you in that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for being with us. And now as we open your word, Lord Jesus, teach us from it, and help us to, to glean the truths out of it, 
and apply them to our hearts and help us to leave here changed because of your word. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. I was almost used to having no pulpit outside. It was kind of nice, um, but it's kind of nice having a pulpit, I guess. <laughs> so they're both nice, I guess, to have their place. But uh, it's good to be inside and to be able to see you. Uh, staring through these car windows, uh, it was it was okay in the moment that we had to make it work, but this is so much nicer. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. Therefore, remember that formerly you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands, remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of, of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who formerly were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall. By abolishing in his flesh the enmity which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so that in, in himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross, by, by it having put to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. And through him we both have our access in one spirit to the Father. So then, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God and the Spirit. All right. Therefore. Verse 11, first word, therefore. And, and when there is, whenever there's a therefore, you always have to see why it's therefore. And so we're going to look back a little bit in Ephesians 2. The first 10 verses are, are rich in the gospel. First, it talks about how we were dead in our trespasses and sin and how we formerly walked with the world and followed Satan. And then starting verse 4, it says, but God, God intervenes. And because of his rich mercy and great love toward us, he made us alive together with Christ. Uh, verse 8 through 10 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Um, so therefore, verse 11, that's what it's there for. And so we got to get a glimpse of, of how it pulls it together there. We are to remember that formerly we the Gentiles, and I say we because we are Gentiles, uh, when, when we see the word Gentile, what it actually means is the nations. Every other nation except for the, is the, the nation of Israel. That's the nations, that's the Gentiles. Um, Gentiles can mean other things too, but in this case, that's what it's talking about. Um, we the Gentiles in the flesh who are called the uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision. Um, we were separate from Christ. We had no part with the covenant of God, that God made with Israel. That wasn't for us. That was for Israel. We didn't have a part with that. We were strangers to these things. We had no hope, and we were without God in the world. Uh, verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, you who formerly were cut off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Uh, so Paul, uh, he's a Jew. He, he would have been taught from young on, right, right from young on, that the Gentiles are unclean. We have nothing to do with these uncircumcised people. Uh, they're unclean. We don't, get, we don't get, have anything to do with them. We don't gather with them. We don't go in their homes and we don't eat with them. 
These are things that we don't do because they're unclean. That's how he would have been taught. And now he's writing this letter to the Gentiles, and, and these are his brothers and sisters in Christ now. Uh, so this, um, he reminds them of where they came from and where they used to be and who they used to be and who they are now in Christ Jesus and who we are now in Christ Jesus. And so uh, this reminder applies to us as well. Sometimes, sometimes we can get complacent, as I imagine that this church might have done as well. Get, we get complacent and we f- have this attitude um, smug and self-absorbed maybe maybe those would be some words to describe it uh that we deserve all the good things and and that we talk about what we deserve and we deserve better and all these things um we can get complacent and and so we forget who we are and from where we came and we can be kind of like the scribes and the pharisees and and we uh lord our self-righteousness over others um and, and, I, and I talk from my own heart how I can become complacent and how, how I can think of someone else as, as lower than me. Um, and this is just uh, from deep down in my heart, when you actually do a self-examination, you kind of find out how wretched your heart is. And, and, and I have that attitude sometimes. It's a confession. I have that attitude sometimes that I'm better than someone else. And, and that's wrong, and I, and, I, and I repent of that. But, but I think... I think that's kind of uh, Paul's motive here is to remind these people of where they were and who, where they came from. And, and I think that's important for us too, is to remember where we came from. And that actually, remember what God forgave us for. And, and if I think back on my life, on, this, on the sins that I've committed, and the, the, the things that I've done, and what Jesus Christ has forgiven me for, it humbles me and it brings me to back down to a place where I, I am lowly and I, and, I, and, I, and I look at others as more important than myself, as we find in Colossians. Um, and I think that's so important. Sorry, Philippians. I think that's so important that, that we don't look at others as lower than ourselves. Don't forget. Remember where God brought you from. Because he himself is our peace, he made both groups into one. That's, I I believe, verse 14. Yeah. He himself is our peace, who made both groups into one and broke down the barriers of the dividing wall. No longer would there be this divide between the Jews and the rest of the world, the Jews and the Gentiles, the Jews and the nations. There is no longer this divide. Jesus Christ uh, broke that barrier down. Uh, Verse 15 says, by abolishing in his flesh the enmity, which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so that in himself he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace. He broke that barrier down. Uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 through 15 says, When you were dead in your transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them through him. Having forgiven us all of our transgressions and having canceled out the certificate of debt concerning of decrees, decrees against us which was hostile to us and that was that was the law that was the law in the ordinances that and all the the different things that they had to do the ceremonies and all these different things that's what he's talking about here Uh, another one is galatians chapter 3 verse 23 through 29 it says but before faith came we were kept in custody under the law being shut up to the faith which was later to be revealed Therefore, the law has become our tutor to lead us to Christ, so that we may be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you were baptized into Christ, all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free man, 
There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to promise. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free man, there is neither male nor female, for now you are all one in, in Christ Jesus. And so, so the barrier was broken down, and now we're all one. The Jews, the Gentiles, male and female. Um, he reconciled all the groups to God through, death, through the death of Jesus on the cross. And the amazing part is, is this was prophesied, foretold many years ago. Uh, and then there's quite a few more passages of scripture. I'll share with you a few of them. Uh, Isaiah 57, 19 says, Creating the praise of the lips, peace, peace to him who is far and to him who is near, says the Lord, and I will heal him. And this is actually who um, Paul is quoting in verse 17. Verse 17 says, says, And he came and preached peace to you who are far away and peace to those who are near. That's who Paul, Paul is quoting. He's quoting Isaiah here. Um, Zechariah 8.13 says, And it will come about that just as you were a curse among the nations, house of Judah and house of Israel, so I will save you that you may become a blessing. Do not fear, let your hands be strong. So just as they were a curse to the nations, uh, God is promising that, that one day they will be a blessing to the nations. And they were because Jesus Christ came out of Israel. And so they have become a blessing to us. And that's amazing. Uh, uh, Isaiah 60 verses 1 through 3 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you, and for behold, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. And I, this is beautiful. It's prophesied many, many years before Jesus came that one day Israel will be a light to the nations because of Jesus Christ. Um, and one day we can be heirs of, the, like, the same as Israel because we're adopted in uh, the way uh, Hebrews, I think it's Hebrews, talks about it, we're grafted in, like some branches uh, on a tree and, and some are pruned off and some are grafted in. I'm not, I'm not a tree guy, so I don't actually know how that works. But I do know that I have a tree at home and I had no idea that this was actually possible, but I think we have four different kinds of apples that's supposed to come from that tree. I had no idea that worked, but apparently it does. Um, so I think kind of like that, that's how we're grafted in, and we've become part of the tree, and part of the branches. And so uh, it's a beautiful thing. Because through Jesus, we both have our access in one spirit to the Father. So now, now we're connected in spirit one to another. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter what country you come from. Uh, doesn't matter what language you speak. Doesn't matter whether you're male or female, whether you're young or old, uh, whether you drive a Ford or a Chevy or a Toyota or whatever you drive. Uh, doesn't matter where you stand on political issues. It doesn't matter if you drink Coke or Pepsi. But we're all one. Uh, some of those were humorous just in case you didn't know <laughs> because we all know Ford you should all drive Ford so <laughs> if you have faith in Jesus Christ you have faith that he died and he rose again and he is Lord of your life then we are brothers and sisters in Christ we are brothers and sisters in, in Christ and we are connected to the church. We are part of the body. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22 through 23. It's a little bit before our text here. It says, And he put all things in subjection under his feet, and gave him, that's Jesus, as head over all things to the church, which is, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. You know, we talk about being a body of believers. Do we ever think about what, what are we the body of? We're a body of believers, but what are we the body of? And according to this, according to Ephesians chapter 1, 22 through 23, we are his body. He is the head. We are the body. The church is his body. We are part of the church. We are part of the global church. And so we are his body. We are the body of Christ, 
who is the head of the body, and it is his spirit that fills us and guides us. So, interesting thing, when you, when you go to a different country, or you, even a different province, or even a different city, and you, and you meet someone, a complete stranger to you, and, I, and I've experienced this myself before, and, and you meet someone, and, and you feel like you have a connection to them. It's not some magic or whatever, whatever. Sometimes it's because uh, you talk to them and then you find out that he is actually part of the body too. And you find out he's a brother or sister in Christ. And that's why you feel that connection with them. And I don't know, I've, I've experienced that several times and I, to me it's something special. And, and you meet someone and you, and you don't even talk to them and you just see them and it's like, man, like it's, I feel like I know him, you know? So that's, that's pretty cool. But I, th I think that's because we are all part of the body of Christ. Um, verse 19 says, We are no longer strangers and aliens, but rather we are fellow citizens with the saints, and we are of God's household. So when you meet that person, he is of the same household of you. And so he's your brother, or he's your sister. Or she's your sister, he's not your sister. But... Um, so they're part of the body. And so you meet them, and you're meeting family. And it's, that's, that's a cool thing. Well, let's never forget that we are just a very small part of the global church. And this, is why, this is why we are to be very welcoming when, when someone new comes through that door. Because when someone new comes through that door, they are a sister in Christ. Or, or a brother in Christ. Or, or potentially, they could be joining our family soon. And so, so we need to be welcoming. When somebody comes through the doors that that's, doesn't normally come here, we need to be welcoming and, and, and truly invite them in and, and say, welcome here, brother or sister. Or if they are not, then, then we can share Jesus Christ with them. This is also why it's important that we work together with other Bible-believing churches. Because we aren't the only church. You know, and sometimes, sometimes we get this attitude or this kind of this, we're just going to do our own thing here. You guys do whatever you want there, and we're just going to do our thing here. Um, and actually, actually, the church next door, they're a Bible-believing believing in Jesus Christ, that he's the only way to heaven, and they believe that this is true. They are our brothers and sisters in Christ, and we need to be working with them for kingdom work. Uh, we're not in competition with them. It doesn't work that way. We're not a business. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. Verse 20, um, and we are built on the foundation that God has laid out through first the prophets and then the apostles and Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone. Uh, Psalm 118, verse 19 through 24, says this way, Open to me the gates of righteousness, and I shall enter through them. I shall give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous will enter through it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone which, is the, which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our, in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, so I, I found this little blurb on, online here about, about cornerstones, and I figured I'd read it here. Uh, Since ancient times, builders have used cornerstones in their construction projects. A cornerstone was the principal stone, usually placed at the corner of a structure to guide the workers on, in their course. The cornerstone was usually one of the largest the most solid and the most carefully constructed of any of the structure. The Bible describes Jesus as the cornerstone that the, his church would be built on. He is foundational. Once the cornerstone was set, it became the basis for determining every measurement to the remaining construction. Everything was line, aligned to it. As the cornerstone of the building of the church, Jesus is our standard of measure and alignment. It is Jesus, the chief cornerstone, that we, the body, we, the church, is being fitted together and we are growing into a holy temple in the Lord. Isn't that cool? Uh, Jesus Christ, he is the foundation of the church. He is 
where we build upon. He is where we align ourselves to. If, if the cornerstone, if you can't see the cornerstone and you're looking along the wall and you can't see the cornerstone, you're out of line. You need to get back in line because you need to be able to see the cornerstone. And that's Jesus. And, and, that's, and that's vitally important. Um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 6 also talks about this. Therefore, putting aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, like newborn babies, long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation, if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. And coming to him as to a living stone, which has been rejected by man, but it is choice and precious in the sight of God. You also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices as acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For this is contained in Scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious cornerstone, and he who believes in him will not be disappointed. So we share in this building project of God. We are living stones along with Christ and we are being fitted together. Each one is unique and special and, and God patiently, lovingly taps us into place because he's the builder. He patiently, lovingly, gracefully, he chisels us, taps us into place. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it hurts when he's chiseling us and, and tapping us into place. But sometimes that's what we need because because maybe we had a little bump here and an imperfection here and, and maybe a little bit uh, something there, a sin that's in the way there, and he's chiseling at us. Sometimes it hurts, but it's good for us. Sometimes us stones groan and moan as we press, are pressed together and he lovingly takes his chisel and chisels sin out of our lives. Often it's painful when God shapes us into his masterpiece. But what a beautiful picture of how God just doesn't, doesn't just shape us individually. But instead, he shapes us into his church. Using each one of our uniqueness for his purpose. And together we start taking form as his dwelling place. And together we share in the sometimes joyous and sometimes painful building process. Verse 22 of our text says, In whom you are also being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. Um, I don't know about you, but sometimes we can get, I can get very caught up in, in my relationship with God. It's about me as an individual. Um, and, I, and I start just thinking about myself. Just about me. It's between me and God. You know, um, uh, Josh Turner has a song, Me and God. You know, I don't need anybody else. Me and God. Um, not, not to, I like that song, but uh, that's <laughs> maybe a little problem I have with it. But it's actually not just me and God. It's us and God. Because we need each other. And we together are the church. It's, it's why it's so important that we can gather. And that we can get together and we can uh, sharpen each other. And we can encourage each other. God isn't just building an, an individual stone. You can't build a, a church, you can't build a, a, a structure with one stone or with two stones. It's not just me and God. It's us and God. And we are being shaped together into the structure of God's dwelling place. We are the church. I'm not the church. We are the church. And I think that's so vital that we remember that, that it's us, it's not me, it's not I. Sometimes we can get caught up in the nastiness of the world. Uh, we see the earthly things collapse that would never, that we, we would have actually never imagined that they would fall over and collapse. And I'm not just talking about buildings, but things, just um, governments and, and different things and the, the ways they go and the things that they do. And we, we thought, oh no, that's, that'll be 50 years from now that might happen, but not now. And, and so we see these things. Um, we see the world tear each other apart like wolves. As soon as, as soon as something doesn't bow down to their ideals, they cancel it and they, and they protest against it. And, and we see this. And we wonder what, what is the Christian's take on this. Um, one thing we need to keep in mind is that we are the stones 
Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. And Jesus told Peter that, that he's building his church and the gates of hell will not overpower it. Jesus is building his church and that won't stop until, until Jesus calls us home. But uh, until then, he's building his church. And, and uh, it's not about my power or your power. We can't, we, we're powerless to do that. But we have a savior who is all powerful and, and, he, can, and he can intervene. So, so God will build his church and, and he's doing it. And, and we as the stones, we just need to be um, submissive to him and work together. Now more than ever, we need the church to make sure that we are still connected to the body and still following orders from the head, Jesus Christ. We need to remember who we are and how we got here. We were dead in our sins and our transgressions against a holy and just God. We followed the world's ways and were part of the darkness. Uh, we were Gentiles, unclean and uncircumcised. We were by nature children of wrath, just like the rest of the world. We were separated from God and had no hope of redemption. But God being rich in mercy because of his great love toward us. Even when we were dead in our trespasses and sin. Made us alive together with Christ and through his blood, his sacrifice on the cross made a way for us. Never forget that. That we were wretches. Horrible people. And we were forgiven by an almighty, amazing God. Let's not get caught up in the world's way of talking that, that says, oh no, deep down inside you're a good person. If you really do a hard examination, we are not good people. It is through Jesus Christ alone that we are anything. Because if we were good people, Jesus would not have needed to come. God, rich in mercy because of his great love toward us, even when we were dead in trespasses and sin, made us alive together with Christ, and through his blood, his sacrifice on the cross, has made a way to God has broken down the barrier of the dividing wall, and he is in the process of building his church with him, with him being the head, the chief cornerstone. In closing, I'd like to read from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 through 16. As a result, we are no longer to be children, tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by whatever joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of, its, of itself in love. Um, I'm going to pray. And then I will be doing the benediction. Um, and then uh, we'll ask Menno and his family to come up for one more song. And, and then, uh, then you are dismissed after the song. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the head and that we are just the body. Thank you that you are in control that you are the one who thinks the thoughts and makes the plan and we follow your commands because it would be a messy thing if we were in control. So thank you that you are in control. Help us to follow you. Lord, as a church, help us to follow you. Help us not to weave to the left or to the right, but to keep our eyes fixed on you straight ahead and move forward. Help us to love our enemies and do good to those who persecute us. Help us to be more like you, Jesus. Forgive us for the times when we fail 
for the times in our hearts when we, we feel like we're better people than others, when we get arrogant and, and uh, conceited, when we start loving ourselves more than others. Help us to grow as your church. Fit us together, Lord Jesus. Take your chisel and tap us and, and chip away at us until we fit together and we become part of your structure. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for your word, for what we can learn from it. In your precious name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hebrews 13, 20 through 21 says, Now the God of peace who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, even Jesus Christ our Lord, equip you in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. the answers to